Speaker. I thank the gentlelady from Colorado for yielding time and for her exceptional leadership. Every family in America who has concern about the health and well-being of moms and dads and grandparents and children, brothers and sisters, owes a deep debt of gratitude to Diana DeGette. Uh, with her stewardship of this bill, she has given us an opportunity, an opportunity to give hope to these many families across our country. Every one of those families in America, every one of us, is one telephone call or one diagnosis away from needing the benefits of stem cell research. I can't help but think that those who are against this legislation today would want their family members, their child with diabetes, their husband with Parkinson's, their father with Alzheimer's, their mother with breast cancer, to have the benefit of stem cell research. Science is a gift of God to all of us, and science has taken us to a place that is biblical in its power to cure, and that is the embryonic stem cell research. Congresswoman DeGette not only worked uh, on this legislation on its substance, she was generous with her personal experience uh, to demonstrate the need for the bill. She understood that this legislation had to be bipartisan, and I commend Congressman Mike Castle of Delaware for his exceptional, exceptional and courageous leadership on this legislation as well. Today we continue the debate. As, as Mr. Barton said, we've had this debate before. In fact, bipartisan majorities in both houses of Congress have passed similar legislation before. Yet with his cruel veto pen, President Bush dashed the hopes of many for the healing potential of stem cell research. Today, we, along with millions of Americans, are hoping for a different outcome. Because every family in America, again, is just one diagnosis, one phone call, or one accident away from needing the benefits of embryonic stem cell, we hope the President will consider his position. Mr. Speaker, uh, this week I'm observing 20 years in the Congress of the United States. I'm proud of that, but I, I mention it here because this is one of the most glorious days in the top five for sure uh, that I have experienced here. Uh, with the introduction of this legislation again, with its passage, which I think will be uh, clear and bipartisan, uh, we are doing something that is relevant to the lives of the American people. And we are doing something that gives people hope. With this legislation, we have the opportunity to save lives, find cures, and again, give hope to those suffering. It's an opportunity that neither we nor the President should miss. This, allow, this legislation, as has been mentioned, would allow America's scientists to pursue the science they believe has the most promise to cure. It would bring embryonic stem cell research under the strict controls and ethical guidelines of the National Institutes of Health. That doesn't exist now. Why would we reject that? And it would help ensure our nation remains preeminent in science. There's every compassionate reason to support, and scientific reason to support stem cell research. But why would we send this promising science offshore? Why would we allow other countries to attract, attract the best scientists with the best facilities and the best public support? If that excellence leaves us, then we are not the best. That's completely unacceptable to Americans. I'm so proud of my own state of California where we have taken action on the ballot to establish uh, the research in our own state, but it should be available to the entire country. According to scientists, including many Nobel laureates, embryonic stem cell research could unlock the doors to treatments and cures to cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and many, many more diseases. If we have a scientific opportunity to treat and cure disease, we have a moral responsibility to support it. Through stem cell research, this bill has the potential to bring hope and health to millions. I hope the President will sign it. It, 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 is, uh, it has support in Congress and in the country. 72% of Americans support this bipartisan bill. 
That is a remarkable number for a remarkable bill. Our nation's scientists support this bill. Our finest research institutes support this bill. And many religious organizations support this bill. In fact, many religious leaders endorse this bill because of its respect of life and their belief that science has a biblical power to cure. As the Episcopal Church writes in their letter in support of this legislation, quote, as stewards of creation, we are called to help mend and renew the world in many ways. Medical research expands our knowledge of God's creation and empowers us to bring potential healing to those who suffer. Thank you, Congresswoman, to get, uh, Congressman Castle, for giving us the opportunity to support that science and honor that moral responsibility. Thank you. All time for debate has expired. Pursuant to rule, pursuant to House Resolution. For